take some more. You don't have to follow everything I'm doing. Recording has started. Hello, so, everybody. So I can find some other paintbrushes. I'm just going to give everybody one if they want to use them. Okay, that sounds great. And then, um... So what, I love how you have cutouts, um, uh, printouts, sorry, right there too. I will say I can be a little dyslexic and say things backwards sometimes just to make it extra spicy and interesting for you. That's fine. So with this little guy, what I've done, because you have smaller paintbrushes in general, I made light blue and we put it on with, with paper towel. And we're going to just get her on there. And I see somebody going on there with their blue already. You can go perfectly fine at your own pace. What I'm going to do is get us going as fast as possible with the background. Um, I'm here to help with the drawing part and show you a really cool thing about perspective of the mushrooms. So that might help if you're beyond beginner. But we're going to do the blue on the top first. Push some darker in the bottom right here. And I do tend to go step by step with the color mixing on purpose to try to get it draw, dry in the right time. So you can paint whatever you want with the paints you got. I'm going to be giving instructions for what we're doing right here and drawing the perspective of the mushrooms. Yours might look amazingly better than this one, or it might be what you can do. And that's fine. We're here to have fun. So the Mario mushroom and some dandelions, which are not out here yet. It's, we, we've had some nice ice storms over here too. So I'm also gonna try to do this vertically behind me. Um, we're gonna start with a little bit of blue and a bunch of white. That blue that you've got, it's gonna go a lot farther than you think it is. Uh, uh, if you've mixed colors before, you know that a dark color is gonna go very, very far on your palette. So you see what I've got right here? A little spot of the blue. That's gonna be way too much for what we need for this background. But I'm just putting it on there for laters. Uh, so when you're mixing really dark stuff and really light stuff, you wanna take a scoop of your light, separate it out, and add a teeny dab, tiny dab of that darker stuff. And it's going to go a very, very long way. Here we get nice and close. And you can make that as dark or as light as you want for the background sky. You'd have to be at a funky angle to see a sky, mushrooms like that, but it's just a nice contrast. And I'm doing a horribly, horrible thing and just getting this all over my paintbrush. I can soak it off. It will be fine. I've got a nice light blue right there. It's nice and simple. If anything, if you make too much blue, that's great. We can turn it into yellow really easily. As you probably know, you add yellow and blue together and you get green, but we will want a deeper green than what we've got right here. So good pile of blue. It's going to go pretty fast and we can always thin it out with water. I'm going to get you started real, we're just going to chug through this background, blue and white, that's it, and then we're going to make green on the bottom, kind of darker. So what I want to get us to is a point where we're drawing those mushrooms and just playing around with those flowers, because that's what people are going to be spending a lot of their fun times with. So if you've got a little wad of paper towel, that's what I'm going to be using to do the background instead of a brush. Unless you have a brush that's about the size of your thumb, you will want to do the paper towel. So I've kind of ripped up a little wad and you see how I made it kind of flat right there. It doesn't matter, it's gonna flatten. That's the nice thing about acrylics is that it's very forgiving. You can do all sorts of stuff and it's very forgiving. I'm just gonna scoop it up there on my makeshift paintbrush. Take the top of this guy right here and get her on there. It's, you don't have to worry about being precious with this first layer at all. It's just a nice flat background. And anything, if anything, you want this first layer to be pretty thin to try to dry. Um, especially if you're taking it home tonight, it might be a little goopy. 
but the thinner the better. I don't know what the humidity of your building's like. Libraries are pretty dry, which might actually help this, especially since we're painting quickly. So I've been about two thirds of the way down. And you can see with the example there, that's kind of where the grass starts in the background too. So we want to overlap that a little bit. Nice and easy. I see some wonderful smudging paint on there. I kind of like seeing the whole classroom at once. I don't know how you did that, but it's kind of fun to see. I know. I put the webcam way up high and it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Usually I have it on the mountain on something that falls over. And... Yep. Or individual like room stuff, which is fine. Yeah, yeah. I like seeing if I'm going too fast, I can see it this way. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm already thinking about these things. I don't want to go too fast for you. At the same time, don't worry about it. And I see some wiping off. Good, good, good. He'll be okay, I promise. <laughs> Excellent. Swirling around and swishing. Good, good, good. If you've, I see a lot of blue almost on there. And we're going to be working with a, I want to put a pretty deep green on the bottom, right under here. All right. So I'm actually going to need to make a new puddle of things for that, which includes my yellow and red, a tiny little bit of red for that too. And I'll show you why. It has to do with complementary colors. If you're familiar with color wheel stuff, you've got primaries, which we've got a lot of primaries with us tonight. It's, it's a decent amount of color mixing for a short class, all right? So good job for following along at this pace of super color mixing. When it comes to complementary colors, those are the colors opposite each other on the color wheel. And I'm trying to see if I actually have a color wheel on my wall, but I think it fell down somewhere safe. Um, if you're looking at the circular color wheel, now I wonder. They're kind of opposites each other on that basic color wheel. When you add those opposites together, they dull each other down a little bit. So same thing with going with green. You, when we mix it, in general, you always want to take the lighter color, scoop it out so you're not mixing the whole thing with green, add a little tiny bit of your darker color. And this bl blue stuff goes a very long way. You've probably figured that out already. Uh, it's a very nice pure blue color. And I'll probably want mine a little darker than that. That's a great green, though. We might use that for the grass. And if you don't have enough green, it's super easy to mix more. So if you want more green for the grass later, you just pop some color on there. You're going to be fine. Now with that green, this stuff right here, I actually want to be a little tiny bit darker. So I'm going to add the teeniest little bit of red, that complement opposite color of green. Too much, you're going to go straight brown which is a way you can get brown on purpose. Mm -hmm. A tiny little bit is gonna help darken it up and help it be a more earthy kind of color because it's brown. I love telling students that if you do something on accident, you know, once, oops, it's a mistake. Acrylic is pretty forgiving. But if you know what it does and you do it on purpose, it's a technique. So if you add more red and you get brown, you learn just how to make brown, that's fine. There's my dark green. And I'm probably gonna use my paper towel again. Could it be the same paper towel, honestly, or another little wad on the bottom of that. So the idea is we're creating a contrasting bottom layer for your lighter grass to go on top of. Now this composition might seem really simple, but we're actually working with a lot of negative space, the composition of colors and contrasts, and some perspective on those mushrooms, which is what we're trying to get to, because we can play around for that for hours. So I'm gonna charge through for that, and then we're gonna get to our mushroom drawing. And a lot of these, like doing all this in 45 minutes is speed painting. <laughs> And if you find, oh no, you need more green, you can also tap your paper towel into the blue and just get her on there. That's the important part of just filling it up. So I've actually dipped that into a little bit of blue and it makes a really fun kind of gradient too, honestly. 
So you're mixing colors, smudging on the paper towel. So what I'm gonna do next is draw those mushrooms. This is kind of the foundation of what we've been getting at tonight. And then everything else is icing and you can blend and blend and brush and brush and it's real fun. So, pardon me. I'm going to take my little thin brush, if you have one of those, and we're gonna be drawing with it. So I wanna do a really quick perspective lesson on the back of one of these, because you've probably, ah, you've probably been taught a lot of perspective lessons with boxes and straight lines about how to make buildings to go into the distance, whether you're on top or below. But I wonder how many of those times you looked at round things in perspective. They don't usually teach that at the same time sometimes. Um, sometimes like spheres or balls, they turn into ovals. So quick 30 second perspective of circle things. Here's your horizon line. Nice, it's purple now. Need some water. And when you've got the closer the horizon line, the more narrow that oval is going to be. The farther away from that horizon line, if you're looking up at it, it's going to be a very open circle. I'm also doing this upside down. So you've got something in between. So the closer, like to your eye level, the more narrow it's going to be. And then the farther down you're looking at it, the more open that cup is going to be. So if you're drawing a coffee cup or a bowl and you're looking down, it's going to be pretty open at you. This is important because of these mushrooms. So when you know that, we're basically a mouse in this picture. We are like down here looking up into those mushrooms so you can kind of see the fins or whatever the heck they're called on the inside if you want to get to that part. So the way I've drawn this, we're a mouse looking up at those mushrooms. And now you're going to notice when you draw that or draw other cups of things, how if it's too narrow, is it too wide for what you're doing? So I've done four mushrooms on here. I'm going to do three real quick so I can demonstrate. And if you're comfortable, you can do your fourth one. I see lots of smudging still going. You're fine. You can, you can totally catch up. You're good to go. So with this one right here, kind of the quarter part, I'm going to make a nice open. It doesn't have to be perfect at all, obviously. That's a nice UFO in the sky, basically. Round UFO. And with the paint, you can smudge it around to get what you want. If it's not perfect the first time, that's fine. It might just be rounder. So there's one. It's pretty open. And I'm going to add one over here, I think. And because it's lower than the other one, it's technically closer to the horizon line and it might be a little more closed. So the horizon line that we're basically talking about right here is kind of the grass line, kind of, sort of. So I might even make one that's really closed right here. Just, yes, we're making it up as we go, but the consistency of what we're talking about here is what's gonna make it read pretty well. And then what you've got bottom here, you've just got the cap of the mushroom underneath. So you're not even gonna see underneath that at all. And I did that on purpose, so you get that. And I'm just gonna go in and fill in the top of that mushroom too. Ta-da. And I see a lot of ovals going on and small paint brushes and smudges. So we've got big wide oval on the top and they kind of get more narrower the farther you go down. Now I've tilted mine a little bit. You might, yours may not end up so tilted, that's fine, that's okay. Um, you can try three at a time if you want, because we're going to get some paint on there pretty good so we can do our dots on top. All right, I see some beautiful ovals happening in there. And I promise we've made a really simple color mix that you can correct this pretty easily if you find yours looks really weird to you. And we're going to paint more on top of this too, so it's going to correct as we go. That's the nice thing about acrylic, drying fast and doing layers. So with that on my brush, I'm actually gonna add some white onto my brush after I do my ovals. And I'm gonna pull the stems directly down out of them. So this little guy, he's just on the grass. It might tilt out a little bit. 
Now white with almost any paint makes it very opaque. If you have a transparent pigment, you can add a drop of white and it will help a lot. So um, there's my little guy down there. And this one's kind of open. You can make all sorts of different kinds of stems. I'm just going to pull that straight down. And that one kind of goes in the top of that cap. So the ones where you can see on the inside of your mushroom, I'm going to kind of start kind of where the middle is and just branch out a little bit. The nice thing about mushrooms is they're such mushy shapes. You've got a lot of leeway for your drawing. Starting in the middle, a little smudge kind of in the middle, like a very smooshy clock, and just pulling it down. And with this one especially, it might disappear into the cap of this one, and that's fine. That will actually help with your perspective and layering when things overlap each other. So I've added white here and there. Cool. Yay! Charging forward! If you've got any of that dark green left or whatever you have with that, that would be a really good idea to pick up some of that with a teeny tiny bit more red. Remember that brown I was telling you about? Or just a nice darker color. And while the white is still wet, I'm just gonna add a little bit to the side of these mushroom stems, just a tiny little bit. Now I made quite a big smudge of those. This is where, I just made one big stroke on the smudge of those guys. And they're kind of green, which is kind of cool. What I'm going to do, wipe off my brush and just kind of smudge it more in there and kind of blend it. They're going to be very brush strokey, and that's fine. We're going to let them sit and think about what they've done a little bit. So it's very brush strokey. It's very green. And the whole thing is kind of impressionistic anyway. So I'm not going for super blendy. You can do that. That just takes time mostly and oil paint for drying purposes. So this one's a very brush strokey kind. All right, let's set off. We actually wanted some of that to get a little dry. And this is the part where I want to add that really bright white, bright red mushroom cap. Maybe you've already got some nice red stuff underneath there, but those ovals are still the under part of your mushroom, aren't they? So what I'm going to do because I wanted that contrast for the white and it'll add shadows and stuff. I want this red stuff right here. I'm gonna add a teeny bit. Now it's a darker color and this is where we mess around a little bit. Add a tiny bit of yellow that kind of brightens red up, especially with acrylic. If you add straight white to red, it gets chalky. So adding yellows to that actually helps a lot. And then, because we're trying to go over stuff and this is a little transparent, I'm going to add a teeny tiny little bit of white to that red. And you're going to find that that stuff covers a lot better. Still nice bright red. Nice! I'm seeing a lot of nice ovaly mushroom things going on. Cool. This nice bright red, you're just making it a hat. A nice big, it's a C shape if you think about it. It's going to connect on both sides. And mushrooms make all different shapes throughout their life cycle. So don't worry about it. It's going to connect on one side. You could even start a line up here. It's going to go up and over. And this is where you're going to correct that oval on the inside if you really want to. If you don't, it's OK. And honestly, you might find something later on after you haven't looked at it for an hour and like, oh, I want to fix that. That happens a lot with painting too. And I'm going to do that for every single one of these. Now this little guy, I'm, because he's tilted down, almost all of it is going to get covered up. Whee! That's much color. I'm also doing this sideways. And when you've got something like that, you can even pick up some other red and get some stuff on there. This is where your paint's probably gonna get a little thicker. So you're gonna watch out as you go home and walking through the library, of course. And take that stuff and give it a little hat. That little hat. 
Now, if you wanted to, you could go in and do some red white dots. They're gonna turn pink really fast. So we actually wanna leave that red stuff alone for now. And this is the part where we go back, we let the mushroom sit. Um, they're pretty, they're pretty dark underneath the umbrella of the mushroom right now. That also can matter time and getting the fins under there. I don't know the correct term. I kind of want to look it up for science purposes, but for what we want to focus on is just getting some grass in there and some dandelion poofs or whatever flower color you want to make. But we're going to fill it up around there as fast as we can so we can get back and do some details. So because we've set some really cool, really simple perspective, but you have a nice depth going on with these guys, we can play around with texture and come back to that to refine it if we've got the time. Have I lost anyone completely? I don't think I have, surprisingly, because you guys are doing great. I see mushroom shapes, which is great. <laughs> The most, biggest danger with art classes is that you have way too much fun and time flies before we get to half of it. So, you know how to make green. You might still have piles of it. If you've got that light blue from the sky, this is the time where we break the rules, take a scoop of the yellow and smoosh it in there. Because remember, you've added white to that and that opacity is gonna help us right now. You can add white, you can add more yellow. We can use the other green. We just want a couple couple options of green. And these are gonna go real fast. I did not do anything fancy with this grass. I just pulled straight up with my brush, my little bitty brush. If you've got a wider brush, you could use the side of it. And half the idea is that I'm gonna cover that back line back there. You can do a stroke of green over the edge of some of your mushroom stems too, which also creates nice depth and doesn't means you don't have to finish a mushroom stem. It's kind of like putting mittens on so you don't have to draw hands. Just make them have a fist. It's absolutely cheating. All right, I'm just, I'm swooshing up some green on my palette right here. I'm scraping some of my blue, my yellow, and I'm just getting it on there, filling up that pretend horizon line. You might need to drop some water into your puddle if that helps you. There's... Ah! So what I did right here, the red was still pretty wet when I put my grass into it. And so it made a nice smooshy brown. So what I'm going to do is very carefully put some lighter grass behind it and then around it to make it look like it was on purpose. Works for me. You can experiment. There are so many greens you can experiment with this. Another fun thing to do with this grass is to make the grass go sideways. Humans love symmetry and it's very easy to stripe them down lines all over. One thing that helps me prevent that is twisting the brush in my fingers as I pull it up. All right, you're gonna get some really fun lines. This goes for tree branches, for grasses. You get some cool energy out of this. So even if this is not the most beautiful gallery piece, when we're done with it, you've learned a whole bunch of cool techniques. So I'm gonna pull this one up and twist around with it and maybe pull to the side. And you get a texture you, you can't really force your brain to make because it's almost random at that point. And it goes over and you can kind of play with it and fill it out. I find this really fun to do with tree branches when my brain wants to make them too symmetrical. So you can make some really fun kind of kooky grass going on like that. And it's almost filled up with grass already. Whatever size brush you have, I'm not filling up that background, if you see that. You've got a lot of dark background underneath still showing. Is my volume okay? I know I'm talking quickly. Volume good in the back? Awesome. Just checking. I tried to check my volume earlier too. So I'm making some fun swooshes. Contrasting grass. If you have painted before and you want to dim, um, 
experiment with adding more of that red to get different color greens. It's very easy to go straight brown, but we're here to play an experiment. Use someone else's paint to experiment. So this color, if it comes through, it's kind of an ugly color, but grass comes in all colors. I've actually added some red to that with the other ones. And it makes a nice fun contrast when you're making greens. There's a lot more color grasses out there. But I'm almost done with the grass portion of things. I've got a nice texture going in the background. It's going to the bottom. You've learned a technique for how to make some swirly grass that defies convention and has a really cool color. And we've done that on a contrasting background, which is really, really cool to do when you're doing painting is having contrast. A lot of beginner artists and myself, I still catch myself, stronger contrast, especially when things are closer to you. So that's the grass. I've kind of changed it up with the grass over here, the grass and the sample. I had more blue in it, honestly. That's the difference there. We may not even be able to see that too much. And we're all gonna have different greens anyway. It's how our eyes work and mixing. Um, what I want to do next, real quick, I want to lay some of the flowers out and we're going to use the same technique of making opaque paint with that little bit of white. I'm running out of space a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna use a little bit of that yellow, make a little puddle. And I'm gonna add white to that because that helps make it opaque and go on top. This is a very professional art technique of taking that little blob of white, light yellow and smooshing it on there, straight up and down. It's like a little firework thing, highly technical process. Just smoosh it on there. I kind of torture my brushes a little bit because they're, they're tools to dine for a purpose. If you have very expensive $100 brushes, you may not do this, but I kind of tap around and smoosh them and you kind of get a little poof ball flower thing. And I'm going to tap some around there. I tried to pay attention to the scale of flowers to the mushrooms, but you know what? We're having fun. We're learning drawing techniques, not scientific mushrooms. I put four on there. I might do five. And yeah, it's kind of really blending into my green. That's okay. The idea behind putting your dandelion or flower poofs, whatever color you want down now, with that white, you cover up what's behind there. And so once we go and touch up our mushrooms, we can come back in and put another layer on top. So it's very strategic in the short time period for the different layers and bouncing back and forth to get it a teeny little bit of drying time so you can layer it. It's really fast layering for acrylic. And it can be done outside too. You really can, but it's just strategic. So those flowers are landed right there. You can see I've kind of done a zigzag leaf over here that we can get to, but right now, and you've got some white up here. Let's also get some of those white dandelion poofs. So I'm just gonna take Good old white paint, just like just like last time, a little brush. I'm gonna make one of those very scientific stabs, right like that. And while the paint is still wet, I'm gonna flip my brush around to the you know the the handle end and scrape. This is giving us the illusion of a bunch of you know that those little sticks. We're scraping out some of those things and maybe it will go farther out, but we're getting some sticks and those little seed guys going on right there. It's just a little design, design texture thing of scraping with the end of your brush. So scraping out, I know there's a fancy Italian art term for scraping out paint. Um, I get confused with the one for smoke effect because scraping. So I can smash some more in there like that. Then we can scrape some more out so you get that darker bit. And as you can tell, this wouldn't really work if the paint dries. So the good news is if you've added a little bit of those white dandelion poofs, you might still have white on your brush. 
That's wonderful. Because this is where we want to get some of those on those wonderful wire mushrooms. You, there's a bit of perspective you can do with the dots on the mushrooms as well. I tried paying attention to this one. Didn't do a great job. When you're looking at a round thing and the details, there's going to be more on the edge. My, my paintbrush was very wet, so I wiped that off. There's more details on the edge than there are on the middles because it's kind of congregated. Kind of like the moon. So I'll try to put a few more dots on the edges of things than I would something facing us or closer to us. With the size of our brush and the scale of these mushrooms, it may not work. You can kind of study more of that with the moon um, and how we see it with the craters. You'll they kind of gather up closer on the edge as they go and then you see the wider ones facing us same thing same thing about the circles being more open when they're closer to us big brushes if you want to get your brush to have the paint on the very tip of it which might help depending on the size of brush you have i'll scoop it up and then wipe it off on the corner of my palette a little bit because it kind of it kind of gathers in the belly of that brush. And then I'll scoop up just on the tip, which can help when your paint is still wet. And I'll get some on there. Might get a little pink still, but that's okay. It's all good. You can always go back over there, especially when it's dry and add some more. Add some more. Season to taste, but never taste these mushrooms because these are the death kind. But they're just so pretty. I believe the technical term is fly amanita for the very red with white dot mushrooms. There's a lot in that family. And I also like to give them a little frill on them. That's not the technical term. I don't know what it is. It makes them look more mushroomy to me where they get this little, little skirt. And I'm gonna use that with the white brush as well. There's so much you can do with that white paint. I'm kind of dabbing at that. I'm not making a straight line. I'm kind of dabbing because when you see those little frills on mushrooms, they're frills. They're kind of ribbly, ripply and ribbly and um, they're not necessarily as smooth across. They've got some texture to them. So instead of rendering out that right here in little folds, I'm just going to add some dabs and it's good to go. And what you can also do with this guy up here, you notice I've kind of gone around that shape, echoing that perspective of the guy on top. Echoing the curve of that mushroom cap. This is also a spot where you can communicate that curve of the mushroom stem. Depends on where you're going. They, we're charging along with these mushrooms. It's amazing how they just kind of pop out. And it's only been a half an hour. <laughs> and we've got grass, flowers, sky, mushroom, perspective, and a little bit of shading. That's really cool to charge ahead that far. So with this one, I kind of, because I've still got white on my brush, this is very handy stuff. We're gonna pop some highlights into those stems, only on the other one side. Remember how we did the, the shadow on the other side? On that one side, a little tiny bit, and it's gonna go over better now because it's dried a tiny little bit. And when you go up and close to the stem, we're gonna add this, we're gonna try. I'm gonna try it first, see if I steer you wrong. I'm gonna go in a diagonal away from the top of the mushroom because the sunlight is hitting right here on the edge of the mushroom. It's coming down, wipe it off. And it's hitting that at an angle. So what I'm trying to do is get that angle shadow right there. It doesn't take much for it to come across. But you get that mushroom angle. If this one, if anything, the whole thing's probably in shadow because the way it's angled right there, that's okay. You're getting that angle, pretending where's the sunlight gonna hit it? You can use your brush to do that too if you're out drawing somewhere. Where's that sunlight gonna hit? So this guy, 
this guy's probably going to be in shadow. I probably made too much right there, but you can see that happening right there. It's simple stuff. Um, you know, rendering takes time and lots of blending, which just, that's a matter of time. This is really fast perspective and shadow angles, and it's amazing what you can get done just in that amount of time. So if you're out plein air painting or drawing, the pretty stuff with the blending is gonna come just a matter of time. You can poke at that. The drawing of getting your angles right and watching those shadow angles is also great. I love using the symbol of a clock. So you know where six o'clock and seven o'clock are on a clock face. You can think of those angles if you can't visualize a 45 degree angle. I probably speak in too much of math terms for this stuff. One thing I would love to poke at since we've got a teeny bit of time left is fixing up the shadows underneath this little guy here. So if you, I keep on putting this on my desk and I don't need to, you probably want to see that too. Let me see, a little bit of time left. Let me see. Shadows or touching up flowers? Hands for flowers. Okay, one for flowers. Anybody want to look? Two for flowers. That's an easy one. That's an easy one. If your brush is all swished, cleaned up. With the flowers, it's a very simple process of adding it more white to whatever color you want on that. You're going for contrasting layers. So these are kind of orangey over here. Um, orange is fun. I'm going to use that white again to help make it opaque. And I can add a little bit of red in there. The idea is contrasting and coverage. White will help coverage, especially at this point. Contrasting, it takes almost any color to get some contrasting. So I've made a really quick orange right there. And it's just, just teeny little brush strokes, teeny little poofs of this stuff. It might be too wet. You can put more paint on top of that. You might need to dab just straight white in there and get some poofs. And that can help too. It really depends on how much you've put on the first time, whether another layer is going to take because we're going so fast. And I might just stab some white in the middle because while well, dandelion sometimes there's all different shapes, you know, it's organic. You can have fun with it. I'm surprised how orange you can make dandelions and give them a nice contrast and still have fun. And you can still take this, the edge of your paintbrush at this point and still draw in those dandelions if it helps you. Petals. You can see how that part would just keep going and going and going and going. All right. Contrast and coverage. That's what you're looking at with those flowers. If you've laid a really thick dark green, you're probably going to have some problem with that until you get home or work on it later. Or you can go in there and scrape it out with the paintbrush or whatever you need. You can kind of wipe off your paintbrush and pick stuff back up too. Acrylic is pretty forgiving. With the shadows on the mushrooms, it's kind of an umbrella underneath. I'm gonna take my darkest stuff. So quick dab of blue, quick dab of red at the dark purple. Great, purple's great. And yes, I added some white to that because it's not pitch black underneath those mushrooms, okay? It's kind of purpley. I'm fine with that. There's all sorts of science to what color shadows are. And quite frankly, this is a whimsical painting. We can make them what we want. I tend to stick to darker, cooler colors. I've kind of picked the, the light coming from this direction. So I'm going to make the underbelly of that umbrella the darkest coming from that direction. And that still wasn't very dark, so I'll add some more blue, because I don't think you can see that contrast where you are, which means I added too much white. And life goes on, and I pick up some more color. And I want to make the darkest underneath where that's coming from. And it's going to follow underneath that edge a little bit. To make a really quick way of blending it, I wipe off my brush 
and kind of tickle the edges so there's less paint right there. It turned green, but it's okay. You get the idea. It's kind of darker right there. And when I pull it back like that, I get that darker bit underneath there. Right, right. Darker bit towards the edge. Darker bit towards the edge. Preferably not pitch black. It might help to see. Nice and dark towards the edge because you're going to get some. This is also where you can correct that beginning of the umbrella too. I think you can kind of see that. I didn't do that as much in my sample, but since we're getting some shadows going in there, we can poke at that. This is where you can get some of those shadows on the stem back if you need to. Just like in there, it adds another dimension of that shadow. And I will absolutely blend with my finger if I have to, because you probably, you definitely would not have gotten the toxic paints. They're way too expensive. There are toxic acrylics. These are not it. Trust me. So I'll get some shadow in there. And of course, if you want to get those edges, I don't know what they're called. Um, the frill ridges underneath them, a lot of mushrooms, you could go in there and try to scrape them out with your brush if your paint is wet enough. And I kind of like how that's going. Notice how I'm going from the center of where that stem would be and pulling out to where the rays are around your little mushroom guy. And I kind of like it that you can't see it going all the way around. That's kind of fun. And if your paint is too wet, you're gonna pick up some watery white and just make them yourself. But a lot of everything else on this with leaves and brushes and just layers of things, it's a matter of time, drying and contrast. Since we're almost out of time, is there anything else I can quickly pop over, go over, anyone completely lost at? <laughs> <laughs> like anyone just on grass level. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's busily painting still. <laughs> I see a whole bunch of mushrooms and flowers out there. I am very impressed that you all followed along that fast, yeah, especially since we're mixing color as we go <laughs> without canned green. That's amazing. Good job. Come on. <laughs> So they're going to show you some. Oh, yes, please. Oh, cool. Ooh, I think I see people have added some red into their greens, too. Nice. Nice. Lots of mushrooms. Love it. Yay. Oh, cute. Oh, I see some clouds. Oh, the clouds are beautiful. Yeah, they look great. Yeah, those are great. There's so much different things you can do with this and play yeah. around with mushrooms. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yay! And that, dang, I need a nap or something because that was fast. I am still impressed you all followed along that fast with these little guys. But I think they all followed along great. Yes, thank Yay. you. Yay! That's yeah. awesome. So Anna usually comes back around Christmas and we've done some really cool things with uh, bubble wrap and making stuff at Christmas. So we'll look out, we'll try and get her back this Christmas now that we're all in person. So I can have a few more people here. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with us tonight and um, all the instructions. So you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I know last Christmas time, the wave of the sick kind of came through our area. You yeah. guys are only six hours away from me. The wind probably blew it over there. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> we were doing pine trees. Everybody was sick, yeah. Yup, yup. Um, we were doing pine I'll, trees. I'll, I'll, I'll eat one okay. for, for Christmas. We'll do one in December. Yep. There was no brushes involved at all. And no. I'd love to try that one again because yeah, like that was fun. it's yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah, it was beautiful. Okay. All right. Thanks again, Anna. Thank you so much. Okay, Hope you guys bye. have a great time. Thanks. Have fun. <laughs>